I want to apologize in advance for my voice. I had some cervical spine injections uh, 12 days ago, and it uh, my voice hasn't <laughs> hasn't cleared up yet. So um, please bear with me. Thanks. One of the first things that I did was to uh, swap out the motor. Uh, the original was a 95 watt AC motor. This one's a 150 watt DC motor. Uh, so it gives me a better speed range and it gives me better low end torque. Unfortunately, a DC motor requires more than just a motor. Uh, this DC motor required a power supply and a uh, potentiometer for the speed regulation. Uh, it will run up to about, I think it's 2800 RPMs. It'll run forward and reverse, but you don't want to run a Unimat in reverse because it has a screw on chuck. So typically, you don't want that to unscrew. I prefer to keep things simple, so I just made a plywood box. The bottom board's cherry just because I had a piece uh, that was already pretty close to size. The top is a piece of phenolic and a little pocket for the uh, forward and reverse switch. And everything mounts neatly inside of there. I have airspace all around. Uh, even on the back side of the power supply, there's a couple of standoffs, so uh, nothing is blocked. And uh, try to keep it as cool as possible. There are commercially available um, indicator holders for the Z-axis of the lathe. But the issue that I had with them is that if you unscrew, uh, you have to loosen the two screws in order to move the indicator or to slide it along the ways. And when you do that, uh, basically flops down or it's inconvenient. So mine has a, a little extension out the bottom of it. And then it has a 3 16 gauge pin. It was an extra uh, with a piece of brass uh, tubing around it or thick walled tubing now. And that rides against the other way. The uh, mount itself is angled up 18 degrees so that it misses the um, power feed shaft. And when I use a two inch indicator, it also misses the pulley. So it's uh, pretty convenient. I can quickly move it to the back side of the machine also. And I put an extension. I used a 632 screw down through this piece of A2 tool steel, but you can use anything you want with a flat on it. And that allows me, when I'm doing milling, I can put a, a two inch travel indicator back there and uh, nothing's in the way and I can get as close to the spindle as I, or the column as I ever did. The uh, x-axis also has an indicator holder. Uh, the machine itself is is metric and that's not such a bad thing for me, but it uh, the problem is that the you can't zero the dials, so and they're small. So what I chose to do was add indicators so I get actual table movement. And uh, they seem to work quite nicely. This particular one, the height of it, was specifically so that I could use the milling table without it interfering, and so that uh, the little extension that goes off of the cross slide can go can go directly over the screw on the tailstock. So basically it, it doesn't limit motion at all. It, nothing interferes with anything. I decided to add an ER16 collet chuck and a set of ER16 collets. These collets are from Haas. They're quite good quality and they're reasonably priced. I, I recommend them. They Every one of them runs very true. And the little collet chuck itself has a cast iron adapter that I machined up that has the uh, M12 by one thread, plus it has the 12 millimeter uh, mating diameter to align it. And the face of it, uh, where it mates to the uh, purchase chuck, uh, was also machined in place on the lathe. This machine came with a three and a four jaw chuck. Uh, neither one ran very well, so uh, both required a bit of machining um, the four jaw was mostly uh, to the back end, uh, needed some rework, and the three jaw, actually the jaws themselves needed to be uh, remachined. Fortunately, I have a hard inch tool room lathe, 
and I had a method in mind that worked quite well. So uh, now it runs you know, within about two thousandths and, uh, and it projects out straight too, so that's fine. This other one here I bought to replace the first one because I didn't think I could save it. And this one also did not run true, but it ended up the back surface uh, where the adapter attaches to uh, was what was off. Once I machined that in and then machined the adapter in place, it runs very true. So quite happy with that. One of the first things I noticed when I started setting up the milling attachment was that the cross slide itself, the top surface, uh, was not parallel to the ways. So I machined that in place. Um, I put a little bit of drag on the on the uh, screw there so that it would uh, basically be one thing not vibrate and the other thing is that it would be as it's going to be used. Uh, after doing that, I realized that the head was not square <laughs> to anything. Um, so uh, basically side to side, it was uh, fairly good at first, but I found that I had to uh, remachine the face of the adapter itself uh, in order to get the head to sit right, uh, to tram it in properly. And then I had to, because I had to face it, and then I had to also rebore it uh, so that it would sit properly. That hurt the alignment with the pin, so I had to uh, bore a new hole in the adapter itself and sleeve it. And now it uh, trams in almost perfectly just by putting it up there, lifting up on the motor to get the weight off of it, uh, uh, sock it down, and you're done. So uh, that worked out very well. But I also noticed that the uh, column itself wasn't very rigid and it does have a very small bearing surface where it sits uh, once you remove the headstock. So I had a nice big piece of cast iron and I machined up a basically a collar uh, to go over it. After I installed the flange onto the column, I then held the column in my hardinge and uh, just uh, machined about two thousandths off the bottom shoulder of the column so that it, it would not hit the uh, flange wood instead. And uh, it's very nice and rigid now. It's uh, quite solid. So I'm happy with that and it made it repeatable. So now everything uh, in that way repeats. The other things that concerned me with this type of machine is that when you slide the adapter up and down on the column, you'll completely lose your location of anything that you have set up on the milling table or on the cross slide. And that's a problem because you only have five eighths of an inch travel with the quill of the machine, which also doesn't have any way of knowing how far you're moving it. So it, it's an issue. So what I did was I milled a fairly precise or very precise groove uh, down uh, down the most of the length of the column and the adapter itself now has a little short pin that locates into that it's about a one thousandth clearance so when I move it up and down I always put uh, when I get it into position I always put a little uh, pressure toward myself uh, against the headstock so that it always basically is repeatable and it does repeat nicely uh, the other thing is that you needed some way of um, measuring your z-axis so the next thing was to make an indicator mount for the uh, milling operation so I just took a, a longer six millimeter screw on the pulleys and uh, used a, a jam nut and then I uh, I just tapped it I have a basically a shoulder on it, but uh, it's tapped M6 and the indicator rides against that. So very simple. And then I extended my column uh, by an inch so that I basically that's just for the indicator mount. That's not for the col uh, for the adapter itself. And that's so that I don't lose anything by having the adapter on it. So by doing this, a little difficult to hold the camera with one hand to do this. So if you see this, so my quill 
now I have, I can uh, tell exactly how deep I'm drilling or, or how much I'm uh, bringing my end mill down. And then when I have to go further, all I have to do I had to break away for a few seconds because I couldn't do this all with one hand. Uh, so now with the, now I can raise and lower the entire head and still keep track of my distance. I can just push it toward myself and then I can lock the screw. The x-axis indicator mount has to be relieved uh, to get around certain features of the casting. Also the casting is not flat so it's spaced out a little bit from the casting. And then it has two 440 set screws that uh, seated against the casting so that it uh, basically so it's stable because I only use two 632s to hold it on to the ends of the ways themselves, which I ta uh, faced and tapped. They're soft, they're a little bit tough, but they, uh, they tap just fine. Uh, the back of the indicator mount, as I said, is relieved in a number of ways to uh, avoid the casting and also it's spot faced so that it can sit on the ends of the ways without relying only on the screws to uh, hold it in position the uh, like I said these are proud of the casting and uh, tapped 632 uh, probably go 832 but I didn't see the need here's the z-axis uh, indicator mount removed from the machine and uh, it's also spot faced for two uh, 1032 button heads I did that so that I wouldn't have to go so deep and I was able to uh, put the screws fairly close to the actual areas where they're clamping I think that's probably about it for now uh, sorry for the dry video and uh, I said the poor performance of my voice uh, hopefully that will get better soon anyway i hope uh this will be useful to some people and uh best of luck with your machines thank you